previously on Da Vinci's Inquest. She's hurting me! 28 women did not die from AIDS. They were murdered or disappeared. No woman who gets into a car with a total stranger is choosing to get herself killed. I got an idea on the guy who grabbed her. His name's Larry Williams. Who's gonna kill me? This was not his first time. Tell us all about it right now. All the times you've done this before. Well, let's see a lawyer. Go for the wife. People have the wrong man. Larry's not like that. I don't need a shrink. If we knew what Dr. Kinnison discovered in his interview with Williams, it'd be good. Well, okay, I'll talk to him. You've done this before. I think he's already gone far beyond that. To work to kill somebody? I think so. And I think he's preparing to attempt it again. So you couldn't sleep. What did you do? Drove around. Did you have a destination in mind? <sighs> My top of the world. Is that a feeling or an actual place? It's a place where nobody can touch me. Okay. What happens at the top of the world? Are you replaying a fantasy in your mind? Your fantasy isn't working. No. I need to see better. So I can remember. When you say you need to see better, are you looking at someone? I'm looking at the seeing them in your mind. Soon. So what, what does he mean by seeing the women? Mm, it could be anything. A real or imagined object, person, smell, a feeling. Whatever connects him to his memory. Does he ever talk about this memory? No. Does he ever talk about anesthetizing his victims? No. He needs them conscious and involved. So the one thing we know for sure is that uh, he places a rope around their neck. That's always the case. Always the same. And then he drives them. He, they get someplace, and this really cranks them up, too. Provides some sort of stimulus. So are, are you going to talk to him again? Not if he doesn't want to. Listen, doctor, do me a favor here, okay? Try and convince him. Please. Where is the Wilson fire? No, no, no. So I'm following him up the mountain, and uh, I'm hanging back so that he doesn't make me maybe a bit too far. Yeah. Anyway, he takes some access road that I don't see. I miss him, so I go back down to the bottom, wait there for about an hour and a half. He comes down, goes home. You sure he was alone? Yeah. So he heads up the mountain. That's an enormous wilderness up there. Yeah. You ever hear about that passenger plane went down there in the 40s? There's 20 people on board. And they sent out search parties for weeks. They turn up nothing. That was like 50 years before they found that wreckage. No, no, he's probably up there howling at the moon or something. That wouldn't surprise me. Where is he now? Uh, at work. I gotta grab something to eat and come back home. All right. See ya. Yeah.
there we go. Till next year. I'm sticking to my theory. Williams had nothing to do with Marchetti and Myers. Well, I haven't talked to the shrink. I tend to agree with you on that. Uh, Williams likes to tie a rope around the women's necks, and that's definitely not the case in the Marchetti and Myers cases. Well, what about the rope? I mean, the rope is the same. No, it's not the same. It's similar. It's not the same. It was used in a completely different method. In the Marchetti and Myers homicides, it was used to tie up the, uh, the tarp, which was transporting the bodies. It wasn't used to bind the women. I think Marchetti and Myers were killed by a sailor off a freighter. Well, I think that we've got to go back further than 12 months with a bad trick list. You know, keep looking for a witness who's been with Williams. I think we have to go back to the beginning of the missing prostitutes list and find out, you know, where they were seen last and who they were seen with. I agree with that. Maybe we can get these women's pictures back in the papers again. Maybe we can reach out to the public here and see if they can identify if they saw them, where and when and all that. Yeah, we could re-interview anyone who says they saw one of the women the night you went missing. Show them a photo of Williams. Maybe start with the missing women that look something like Ginger. It's the type he prefers. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about the DNA evidence now? How are we doing about gathering up the evidence from the women's families? Slow. Hey, they're spread out all over the country. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. What are we going to do with our DNA database if and when we find the bodies? What do we compare it to? Oh, it's time, money, manpower. Right? We, we don't have the budget for that. What? Identification of the body? That would be under the, uh, the coroner's mandate, wouldn't it? Maybe I can get some help for you on this one. All right, what do Ginger and all these women have in common? They don't look like they're cut from the same cloth. They're hungry, stoned, vulnerable. They're desperate. They're all desperate. There's a look he's after. Yeah, or maybe just going by price and availability. Yeah. You ever pick up a hooker, Leo? What the hell are you asking me for? But I just figured, you know, guys picking up hookers are looking for a particular type, that's all. Every guy likes a particular type of woman. We all know what type you like. What kind's that, Leo? Friendly? Good answer. Okay, what about this one here? Does she look like Ginger? No, not really. How about this one? Yeah, she looks like a similar type. Katie Little George? Yeah, that's the Katie up there. Hey, listen to this one. Bad trick reported a year and a half ago. The guy picked the worker up at Nanaimo and Hastings. He asked for a special, paid her, and tied her up at the wrists. Then he drives her real far out to the stick somewhere. She gets scared and manages to get out and run. What type of car? Mid-80s American pickup truck. Williams drives a Ford. Get the name of the hooker who reported that trick? It should be on record somewhere. I'll uh, call the Downtown Youth Association, see if they've got it. Where do you want me?
are not illegal. This is not about illegality. It's about perception. You know, you're making it very difficult to defend you. She consented. That doesn't matter. You violated the terms of your bail restrictions. There's a very good chance they are not going to grant you bail again. And if they do, it's going to cost you. Uh, call Jean. She'll put up the house for collateral. It's still no guarantee you're going to get out. All I've done is the same thing a thousand other men do every night in this town. Right. Um, listen, I, uh, I got a call from your psychiatrist, and he's still willing to see you. If the judge hears that you've sought treatment voluntarily, it's one more thing in your favor. Okay, so what's holding you up? Come on, let's go. You know, you know if and when these women are found, there's going to be a small army of grieving relatives and orphans hammering down our door, Jimmy, demanding to know the identity of their loved ones. And guess what? I'll be leading that charge. All right, what do you need? OK, what we need is DNA samples from the missing women's relatives. And we got to send those DNA samples to a private lab. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cost a fortune. This Williams, is he a viable suspect? Yeah, I, I think he's the least responsible for some of them anyway. All right. It's an extraordinary budget expenditure, so I'll have to take it to the AG. You get me a summary of your evidence so far, I'll see what I can do. I'll get it for you right away. Thanks. Well, no blood, but four different hair samples off the mattress Williams kept in the truck bed. Also, a lot of stains that could be anything from grease to jism. It's all in the lab. A lot of it's going to be contaminated. From grease to jism, eh? OK. Anything else you can tell me about the truck here? Uh, well, there was some soil under the truck axle there and some carbon residue. Also, a half a dozen different kinds of weeds. Oh, yeah? The rest of the stuff's over here. Is this the, uh, had a sweet tooth? Uh, yeah, peanut butter and chocolate. Brutal. Uh, three cigarette butts. Williams doesn't smoke. Well, no lipstick stains, but I'm having him uh, checked anyways for saliva. Pile like of gas receipts under the seat. What's his occupation? Oh, he's an accountant. What else about the truck? Oh, I found the usual in the glove box, insurance papers, emissions tests, uh, nothing under the ordinary. Okay. Who's that? Is that me? Yeah. Oh, that's me, too. Here we go. Yeah, a couple of hikers were following some cougar tracks. They stumbled on this. Maybe it was another hiker out for a picnic ended up on the lunch menu. Well, the thigh bone over there has what looks like uh, ripped hiker shorts on it. I'll rip the shreds. Is there any way to tell if this is a male or a female? By looking at the chin, I'd say it's a female. She's been there a while. I'll be able to tell more when we gather the bones. And you see those gnaw marks there? Those are probably made by cougar teeth. What, you mean this spot right here is cougar territory? Yeah. Now, depending on whether it's a male or a female, we're looking at an area of activity of about 35 square miles. So did you find anything else that would make you think it's hikers, like the boots or backpacks or anything? She probably wasn't killed here. Usually a cat will drag its meat off somewhere, have a little taste, take a nap, come back, and uh, finish it. And this attack probably occurred miles away, or could have. Yeah, I'll get an ident crew up here, comb the area, and then uh, see if we can find a campsite or anything that identifies her. Yeah. Start working outwards. The guy I saw Melanie with was tall. Yeah. Where were you when you saw them? How far away? I don't know. I, I was close. I was sitting in my boyfriend's car. Yeah? So you're sitting down, a guy looked tall to you then? The guy you saw? Yeah, and he had on a baseball cap. Baseball cap? With a team logo or a company name on it? Uh, Red Sox. That's good. Got the guy? No. No, huh? Okay, well, listen, thanks. Appreciate you stopping by here. I appreciate you coming down. Well, I don't know if I can help. It's been over a year since that prick picked me up. Well, let's see what you can remember. Now, according to this, you said you were picked up by a man in a truck. You said a mid-80s American make. He asked for a special. Yeah, he tied me up. How'd he tie you? My wrists. He didn't tie my feet. That's how I got away later. Yeah, tell me about that. What happened? Well, he gets in the front of the truck, but he doesn't want me to ride up there with him. 
He wants me in the back, in the bed of the truck. He's got a mattress back there. Did the truck have some kind of covering? Yeah, a canopy. All right, so he got in the front, and then what happened? He starts driving. And that's when I started thinking something is off. Because he was going too far. I told him, only lit streets, but he's going for miles. So the truck slowed down going up this steep slope, and I decided to get the hell out. I opened the back, I jumped, and I ran. Do you know where you were? The other side of Second Arrows Bridge. It took me an hour to walk back to the main road. I called the cab from the gas station. Where was the gas station? Right where you go up on that road to Seymour Mountain. There, I guess. Right. Last time you saw Patty, she was getting into a pickup truck. Yeah, that's right. Remember who was driving the truck? What kind of truck? What color? What the time, date, anything? No, I remember she was wearing a red velvet dress, because I loaned it to her. Here, take a look at this. You look like the driver of the pickup? Could be. She says, I don't know. I see a couple hundred guys drive by here every day. I understand. Well, thanks anyway, huh? Take it easy. Excuse me. I just want to talk to you. Look at this picture. Hey, this could help you out. Hey. Now, you just let me know if any of them look familiar to you. OK. OK, send in number one. Next. 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 Thank you. I don't know. They all look alike a little bit. Would you like to see them again? Not the last one, but the one before. Can he come in again? Sure. Could you send in number three? Face the mirror, please. Yeah, he's different, but kind of the same. Maybe his hair was longer. I don't know. I only talked to him for about a minute, and then I got in the back of the truck. Would you like him to walk around the room again? Can you have him say something? Can you have him say, around the world with a special? Could you say, around the world with a special? Around the world with a special. Please. Yeah, that sounds kind of like him. Is that the man? Just take your time. I can't be sure. I'm sorry. That's all. Thank you. She can't be sure. OK, obviously, we've got a partial skeleton here, adult female, approximately five foot seven. How's it is? Oh, no way to tell. There are teeth marks all over the bones, some quite deep. They've been picked over by some animal. Cougar? Mm, probably. No way to tell if that's the cause of death, though. All right, well, I'll take that to missing persons. Any other features that might help to identify or need something? Uh, well, a couple of ribs with old breaks and, uh, of course, old dental set. OK, well, it would be a bad idea to take this set of dentals and match them against the ones of the missing prostitutes. It might turn up something. It's a long shot. Yeah. I'm oh. sorry. Is your cell phone on? Yeah, my cell phone's always on, like you told me. Are you sure? Yes. See? Oh. Battery died. Right. Bobby Marlowe's trying to reach you. Williams made bail again. What? 
No, when? About an hour ago. He's walking into the house right now. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay, how the hell did he manage to walk this time, Bobby? Uh, the judge said the fact that he was still seeing a shrink showed he was in good faith. going into work today. Do you want me to get it? How are you getting along collecting that DNA evidence? Well, as of yesterday afternoon, they've collected samples from the relatives of 17 of the girls, and they're still working on getting the rest. That's great. Did Jimmy hear back from the AG and the extra funding yet? Mm-hmm. He's okay with it. Well, that's great. Then let's get those samples down to that private lab. Yeah, no, that's already in the works. Oh. Well, maybe you better get Chick on the phone. You tell him he's got the okay to send in his samples from William's truck, same private lab, maybe speed up a possible match. Okay. Something over here. Well, I see if you can find a sleeping bag or a backpack, something. Okay. Over here. Huh? Looks like somebody at a campfire. Doesn't look that old. Maybe a couple of months. Huh. Pretty lousy spot to pick for a camp, right in a bush like this. Uh, I think we got something over here. What is it? Finger bone. When did your daughter leave home? She was 15, six and a half years ago. Is that the last time you saw her? In this house, yes. Um, Jessica would call me every once in a while when she needed money, but she always insisted on meeting someplace else. Is there any reason why she didn't want to come back here? She always had her room here. She knew that. Did you know she was working as a prostitute? You know. I wish that they would quit writing that in the paper, you know, showing that awful picture of her. That wasn't her, you know. It's her hairbrush here, right? Do you mind if we take it down in the station? You're holding something back from me. I can see it in your faces. I promise you, if we knew something, we would tell you. Fine, take whatever you want. Okay. We may also need to get a blood sample from you. Yeah, okay. God. 
I should just burn all this, you know. I should just burn it. Everything, I'm just a little bit on edge. Uh, it'll all be back to normal soon. I promise. spot where the cougar could have taken your hiker down. I found a finger bone and a hiking boot with part of a foot still in it. Also a lot of cougar scat. You didn't find anything like a sleeping bag or a backpack or something with a name on it, maybe? Ah, no such luck. Just an old camp site over there and a plastic tarp under the bushes, but no pots or pans, flashlight, nothing that would indicate that she'd ever camped here. Yeah, well, maybe she was just hiking through and uh, she made a fire to keep warm. At the campfire there? Yeah, I'll check this. Polypropylene, like William's used. There's also some hair stuck in a knot. Strung up there like a piece of meat. What's that? Oh, hey, good catch. Yellow silk? A hiker was wearing denim. Yeah, maybe the hem of a dress. you up to? Hasn't been out, didn't go to work today. No? What about the wife? Uh, she stayed in too. Haven't seen much of her. You think she knows? I do. I think she knows. Two people are married. You know when some strange shit's going down. Question is, what do you do about it? Well, sometimes you're with somebody, you know what's wrong. Stick with them anyway. This is one of those issues of, uh, you know, who's leaving the toilet seat up. If you're William's wife and you suspect what he's done. Why do you stick with that? Guilt, maybe. Uh, somehow, you could get to thinking that it's your fault, right? Maybe? Yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah, me too. Well, I gotta get going. I got a meeting. Hey, you want something? I'll bring you something back. No, it's okay. I'm good. Thanks. Sure? Yeah. Okay, now we know that Williams likes to take his tricks up the mountain somewhere, right? Now one of the prostitutes made a phone call from a gas station at the bottom of the road, and Bobby followed him up to the top of the road. Well, if we take a look over here at the topographical map, there's two ways in, this road right here. We can cut over on that access road. Okay, you keep following that access road right along, you come to right where we found that hiker, what we think is a hiker. Now, what about that? Was there any connection to Williams at all? It doesn't look like it, but we did find a piece of rope hanging in a tree near where the cougar attacked her, and that could be connected to Williams. The same type used by Williams, but again, not from the same batch. I also found a hair and a knot in the rope, and I'm having that analyzed. Yeah, and we found a piece of yellow silk dress near the rope, and the dog's got a scent off of that. And the scent led through the woods to the access road. So whoever was wearing that dress could have gotten out of a car on that road and gone down there. Yeah, and there's an old campfire down there that could belong to Williams. Maybe that's his campsite. Didn't the shrink say something about him going to see the women? Yeah, he did. Could be a fantasy, but... Now I'm thinking more and more he's going up there to visit the bodies. We need to be looking hard right here. Hey, Dominic. We're working a grid from the road on down the hill. A couple hours ago, the dog started going crazy. Hey, good job, Muttley. Buy him a T-bone on me. Oh, my God. Quite a few. Good. 
This one's been here for a couple of months. You can see the rope there around her hands and feet. Same kind Williams likes to use. And take a look at her mouth. There's a racket ball in there. Sure is. That one over there is about a year old. Dude. I think that's yellow silk there in with the bones. Now that one over there is a couple of years or more. How many you got here? I only got at least four, maybe five. Found a shovel too. Over under that log over there. And his prints are still on it. Brilliant. You guys must be getting desperate. I've already looked through my office, my truck, my house. It's getting very inconvenient. Well, now we're going to inconvenience you just a little further. Called one of the hair samples from William's truck. It matches one of the DNA samples from the missing prostitute's family. That's good news. Unbelievable. How are you guys getting on here? We've only got two from the mountain so far. We're working on those, and the others will be coming in later today. Okay. Yeah. Mick said that one of the last times one of the missing prostitutes was seen, she was wearing a red velvet dress. That'll help with the ID. Well, we got a decent bank of DNA samples from the women's relatives, so hopefully we'll find a match for all of them. So can you give me a cause of death on this one? The rope was still around her neck, so the cause is probably asphyxiation. There's a very deep ligature mark in the skin there. The neck is skewed at an odd angle. I think he hangs them for a while before he finishes with them. Yeah, that's what I think. That would account for that rope hanging on the tree at William's campsite. And one over here didn't have any rope around her neck. That's because that rope's still hanging on the tree. Oh, for God's sake. Now, listen to me. I don't care what they ask you, you do not answer directly. I will answer the questions unless I give you permission to answer. Are we clear? We found your burial ground. Gentlemen, I'm not interested in your speculation. Now, if you have some evidence, I'm prepared to listen. All right, let's talk about the evidence. We have a lot of it. We have a DNA sample from your client's truck that matches the DNA of a family member of one of the missing prostitutes. And she's going to be one of the victims we found buried up there. Well, my client has already admitted to using the services of prostitutes. Naturally, it's conceivable you'd find some evidence of that in this truck. But as far as I know, you can't date when that prostitute was engaged by Mr. Williams. OK. But all the prostitutes he picked up were bound and gagged with a racquetball shoved in their mouth. Now you put that together with the fact that all the bodies we dug up were tied up the same way with a racquetball stuffed in their face. You get a pattern. We also found soil samples from your client's truck that places him right in that exact area. There was a slash burn up there. They're carbon deposits in the soil. Would you like to explain that? My client likes to walk in the woods. So do half the citizens of Vancouver. Does he also like to walk there in the middle of the night? Because one of our detectives followed you to that road the other night. We also have two witnesses who saw two of the missing prostitutes getting into a pickup truck. Your pickup truck. Circumstantial. I think you're persecuting me because of your failure to find who's really responsible. You should look at that. Mr. Williams, we know that you were the one responsible. Recognize us? One of our detectives just had a conversation with your wife. 
She said you gave her this necklace as a gift. That necklace has been identified as belonging to one of the missing prostitutes, Nicole Lynn. You gave that to your wife as a birthday gift. Nicole Lynn went missing two days before that. I picked her up. I saw the cross. I liked it, and so, so I bought it off her. Uh, she needed extra money to buy drugs. She was a drug addict. So. Yeah. When Nicole Lynn's mother said she gave it to her as a birthday gift, and it belonged to her grandmother. There's no way in hell she would have given it up for any reason. Your wife doesn't believe you anymore. She's decided to cooperate with our investigation. She's got an excellent memory. And you, you're a creature of habit. A petty pincher. Punctual. All those times you came home late from the office? Yeah, she remembers every one of them. My wife only wore this for a week. And then she took it off. <laughs> she says it irritated her skin. I'd like to uh, remind you once again, Mr. Williams, that you can have your lawyer present for this. Yeah, he'll just get his shoes dirty. Come on, let's go, it's getting cold. After you. Where's you guys going? Take a look? No, we've seen it. OK, we'll see you in a minute. Mm -hmm. All right, well, you have this whole mountain to choose from. Why'd you pick this area? I used to come up here and try and shoot birds as a kid. One time I had a raven. I picked it up. And I could feel the life drain right out of it and into me. And I was whole. <laughs> it changed me. We have uh, five graves down here. Is there any more we should know about? One uh, on the other side of the road up there. Car came down. I got nervous. No. <laughs> Maybe you can tell us who's buried down here. Sure. Thank you. Lucky Katie. She was number one. That'd be Catherine Old George. Uh -huh. Last seen October 31st, 94. That's Halloween. Trick or treat. Made a big mistake with her. Yeah? What kind of mistake? No, she scratched me on my face. You gotta tie up their hands before their feet. Well, you forgot to tie up one woman's feet, she got away. Live and learn, huh? <laughs> Jessica, she's number three. Oh, here we are, Jessica Rubino. Last seen buying candy at a convenience store on the 23rd of June in 96. Yeah, I bought her those candy bars. She's all twitchy from drugs. You'll do anything you want for drugs. Number five, Patty. She has a scar on her left breast just above her nipple. I bit her. Be Patricia Todd. Disappeared uh, August 12, 
Victoria, number four. She has the tiniest feet. Victoria Argo. She was last seen in April of 97. Right, but she wasn't reported missing until January 98. She said she needed to go visit her kid, but she didn't. It was a story. <laughs> they all make up stories. Except that one. <laughs> Nicole. A feisty little thing. I don't make small talk. You want to talk back to your wife? That mean to call Lynn, would it? <laughs> also, last seen in Halloween, but that was in '97. Right. right. She's the one I, I took the cross from. She wouldn't get scared. Still, easy pickings. All right. Well, we have the five graves down here. There's one across the road. He told us about. Are there any more? You mean any more like me? <laughs> <laughs>